And so although those of us who experience Jasper as visitors can't imagine what it feels like to be a Jasperite right now, <clears throat> we share this sense of loss with all of those who live in the town, who care for it, and who have helped build it. Jasper, we will continue to stand by you and every, as everyone works to get their feet back under them and as we look forward to recovering. Well, we start today with the devastating scenes coming out of Jasper National Park in Alberta yesterday. One of the most beautiful and pristine parks in the world is on fire and residents of the town of Jasper have been ordered to evacuate. Historic buildings and landmarks in the town of Jasper were engulfed in flames last night as firefighters rushed in to say whatever they could of these critical pieces of Canadian history. We pray for their uh, safety and we wish them all the very best in their efforts. Now, just like last summer, Canadians and particularly Albertans have been caught in the middle of an ongoing debate around what causes these wildfires and how to respond. This is, of course, a political debate. If you are a liberal, you would no doubt look at these scenes and conclude that this is the fault of climate change, of a warming planet caused by the carelessness and inaction of humans. And if you're a conservative, you likely conclude that such scenes must be the result of bureaucratic and government failure to enact proper forest management policies. But there's an easy way for us to see if this is one way or the other. We can look at the United States and elsewhere in the world to see if the situation is happening there. We can look at different policies implemented by different governments around the world to prevent wildfires. And we can also analyze historic data. So we're going to do that today on the show to try and get to the bottom of what's really going on here. Before we do that, however, be sure to drop a like on this video. Help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel. And the common question for the episode is this. What do you think caused the wildfires in Jasper National Park? Let me know your answer in the comments section below and let's get into it. Well, let's start with an update on what the situation is looking like in Jasper right now. This is a video that has been uploaded to social media showing the scenes in Jasper from this morning and it looks downright apocalyptic. And thanks to an update from Justin Trudeau, we also know that the federal government has deployed the Canadian military to help assist Alberta in battling these wildfires. We also know that by 8.30 local time yesterday night, thanks to a Parks Canada update, that the air quality situation had become so bad that even wildland firefighters without oxygen masks had to be evacuated from the situation. Now, it is inevitable that at some point, Justin Trudeau, as well as his ministers, will take to a podium and attribute what we're seeing to climate change. Year after year, with climate change, we're seeing more and more intense wildfires. And with the accelerating impact of climate change, we very much will continue to do so moving forward. Part of this is because of climate change and that we collectively, certainly in Canada and around the world, need to do more and accelerate the fight against climate change. Clearly this is government has not taken the climate crisis seriously. Their actions show that very clearly. Our country is literally on fire and this liberal government thinks that business as usual is fine. Because that's not only what they did last year during the wildfire season, but it's also what they do whenever there is any extreme weather event. Like the recent flash flooding in Toronto. Justin Trudeau, of course, had to blame that on climate change. And not, of course, the obvious, which is poor and outdated city infrastructure. One of the most obvious ways of preventing wildfires is by clearing out fuel that would usually trigger major wildfires using prescribed burns. So you're basically fighting fire with fire. Everybody knows this, this is a well-known and established method of preventing wildfires. But what is interesting is that prescribed burns are not that common in Canada. Yes, they happen but they don't happen at nearly the same rate as would be required to battle this situation. For example, in 2015, Parks Canada set its own record for the number of prescribed burns in a year. 28 prescribed burns. That was the most that Parks Canada had ever conducted. Now, strangely, in 2023, Parks Canada only conducted eight prescribed burns. So in 2015, they conducted more than three times the number of prescribed burns. Now, this piece of information comes directly from the International Association of Wildland Fire. 
According to Kira Hoffman and colleagues in a 2022 paper, Western Canada's new wildfire reality needs a new approach to fire management. The use of prescribed fire has decreased over the 25 years in British Columbia due to increased regulation, smoke concerns, fear of escapes, and a lack of qualified and experienced practitioners. There is no prescribed fire certification framework in Canada. Parks Canada is an outlier among Canadian provinces when it comes to the use of prescribed burning. They embrace prescribed burning, but they just don't do it very often. According to the International Association of Wildland Fire, despite actively using and supporting prescribed fire, there are still relatively small numbers of prescribed fires in area burned per year compared to wildfires. Parks Canada statistics on prescribed fire and wildfires show that since 1981, the annual number of prescribed fires has been highly outpaced by wildfires. It's also important to highlight that the number of wildfires in Canada have been steadily decreasing since 1990 making the climate change argument harder to justify. But something strange happened in 2023. Despite having the same number of wildfires, 2023 saw a completely disproportionate spike in area burned in this country due to wildfires. In fact, according to the Canadian National Fire Database, 15 million hectares of land were burned due to wildfires, while there were 7,000 wildfires across the country. So if the number of wildfires occurring across Canada isn't changing that much from 1970 to 2023, but the amount of land burned has spiked disproportionately, something is going on there. Something needs to be looked at and analyzed as to what exactly is going on. Because it's not as if this graph follows any trajectory, which would point to a warming planet. 2022 had a smaller area burned than 2018. And it appears that 1989 was the year that had the previous record for area burned before 2023. And now according to the Fraser Institute, none of this has anything to do with climate change and it is in fact a failure of forest policy management. As the Fraser Institute writes in a 2023 article, Timestra's study also finds that wildfire management policy in Canada comes up short. A major barrier in Canada is the inadequate funding to support the vision of an innovative and integrated approach to wildfire management. Mitigation funding has allowed wildfire disasters, but not at the same level to mitigate flood and earthquake disasters. Despite the increasing occurrence of wildfire disasters in Canada, funding to support wildfire prevention, mitigation, and preparedness have not kept pace with the increasing need to mitigate the impacts from wildfires and be better prepared when they do arrive. Furthermore, according to a Royal Society study out of the UK in 2016, they found that global area burn due to wildfires had been decreasing over previous decades. As the 2016 research report states, global area burned appears to have overall declined over past decades, and there is increasing evidence that there is less fire in the global landscape today than centuries ago. Now, this piece of criticism on the Canadian government was also picked up on in a 2021 Globe and Mail article with the headline, Canada's massive wildfires are the result of decades of bad decisions. Time to make better decisions. And in this editorial, they highlight different policies implemented in the United States by the Biden administration and by Gavin Newsom in California to try to prevent these fires from happening in the first place, focusing specifically on forest management. As the Globe and Mail wrote in 2021, the idea of cleaning up the forests has come to the fore. In May, the Biden administration announced a plan to at least double the annual work to treat forests. In 2020, the US Department of Agriculture worked on 10,700 square kilometers of forests. To put that into perspective, a record 40,000 square kilometers burned in 2020, including about 16,000 in California. Beyond cleaning out deadfall, the USDA said prescribed burns, planned small-scale fires, are also part of its plans. So it appears that failing to implement enough prescribed burns in Jasper National Park likely played a very significant role in doing this. I also now want to point you to an interesting Facebook post made yesterday by a company called Freya Logging. As it says in the post, our hearts are heavy tonight for the people in Jasper. In 2019, Freya helped harvest blocks to the west of Jasper to reduce the fire hazard. These blocks are outlined in red. This map shows that most of Jasper is surrounded by fairly dense pine forest, much of which was impacted by pine beetle in the last five years. Crown fires travel five kilometers or more. The staff at Jasper National Park were awesome and professional, but this map shows that fireproofing a few areas is not a solution. 
Stand density must be managed at landscape level, or climate change and thick forests are going to continue to wreak havoc on our summers. Pray for the brave firefighters. What you see from this aerial photo, besides the highlighted red blocks made in the forest by Freya logging, is completely dense forest. An over-densification of Jasper, from my estimation, which has created the perfect situation for a massive wildfire. Now, you also read there about the mountain pine beetle situation in Jasper National Park. I want to point you now to this CBC article from 2018 about the devastation that the pine beetle has caused on the trees in Jasper. A professor at the University of British Columbia is quoted in the article saying, the population in Jasper have reached an epidemic level and they've been going like that for at least several years. As a consequence, there are so many beetles that there's not much that can be done and instead, Jasper is just going to have to learn to adapt to a whole bunch of dead pine trees in their forests. The article continues, but in the meantime, some Jasper residents are increasingly worried about not just the aesthetics of red, rusty forests, but also the fire hazards that accompany several square kilometers of dry trees. The people in Jasper aren't saying that they're wondering if the town's going to burn down, it's when the town is going to burn down, said Jasper resident David Miller. Killing a bunch of trees means that not far down the road, those trees will be available as fuel for wildfire. So their biggest focus, once the beetle has run its course, is going to be managing for wildfire. Now that was in 2018, but by December 2022, it appears as though the situation with the pine beetle in Jasper National Park was almost solved. Now, according to a Jasper National Park survey at the time, by 2022, the pine beetle population was reduced by 94%. Now that was attributed to successive deep freezes in the winter, which killed the pine beetle population. So taking what we now know from experts, as well as the data, it's pretty clear that climate change is not to blame for these wildfires. Years and years of poor planning and poor government policy and an inability to do enough controlled burns in Canada's forests have resulted in a situation that we're living in right now. One of the most beautiful places in the world, completely on fire. Just wait. Give it a few days, and almost certainly, you will hear federal government officials reminding you that all of this, all of this, is because climate change. And the solution is simple. Pay more carbon taxes. Reduce your fossil fuels. Drive an electric car. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for us this week on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.